Jack Bell Gregors from Adventures in the Kitchen. I've selected some of my favorite recipes for you to enjoy. They're fun and easy to make. Hi, I'm Bill Gregors. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to be preparing balsamic glazed beef tenderloin. And the ingredients for today's recipe are two eight ounce tenderloin steaks, three tablespoons of olive oil, one cup of beef stock, one cup of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of butter, and salt and pepper. For today's recipe, we've got some tenderloin steaks. We're gonna just let those sit for a second here while we make it. We're gonna make a little reduction. And we're gonna start with some beef stock. We're gonna use about a cup here. And then some balsamic vinegar. This is a regular balsamic vinegar. And we're just gonna fill that up. So we get two cups, pour it into our little saucepan here. All right, and we're gonna put that on the stove and reduce it by half. Okay, we're gonna go to our steaks now. They're all ready to roll here. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, salt and pepper on them. Okay, now you could use, these are beef steaks, but you can use uh, any type of tenderloin. Uh, well, this is usually everybody who doesn't know what to do with their moose tenderloin. We heat up the pan. We add some olive oil to it. Okay, our pan is nice and hot. We're gonna add our steaks to it. And of course, you could cook them to the desired doneness you like. I prefer medium rare myself. The key to cooking a good steak is to only turn it once. And we'll finish cooking them. Okay, our balsamic vinegar and beef stock mixture has reduced by half. As an option to this dish, you can add a little bit of brown sugar, and brown sugar just really, really brings out the flavor of uh, balsamic, especially if it's, a, if it's a young balsamic vinegar. Some of the old uh, artisan-type balsamics are very, very flavorful, and they don't need any uh, little help to them. So we're gonna shut that off now. Our steaks are done. I'm gonna go over to our, pan, our plate here, and we'll put our steaks on our platter. Come back to the stove here and add the balsamic beef stock mixture to our pan. Let that boil for a sec. We'll shut it off. Now we're gonna add a tablespoon of butter and just swirl it around in the pan till it melts. That butter gives a nice shine to the sauce and also, obviously, a nice flavor. Okay, then we go over to our beef, our tenderloin, which is ready to go, and we pour that mixture over top. And here's today's recipe, balsamic glazed beef tenderloin. I'm Bill Gregors from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregorish. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to prepare a magnificent pasta with sweet red peppers, sausage, and cream. And the ingredients for today's recipe are four uncooked Italian sausage, one tablespoon of butter, three tablespoons of olive oil, one and a half cup of diced sweet red pepper, one cup of diced white onion, one cup of dry white wine, four cups of heavy cream, salt and pepper, one cup of Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons of chopped parsley, and one pound of pasta. Okay, for this dish we're gonna use some Italian sausage. Uh, this is a medium sausage. We're gonna remove it from the casing, it's raw. Okay, you can use whatever kind you have, uh, whether it's moose or venison or even duck for that matter. And to start with, we're gonna add some butter and some oil. And the two in combination prevents the, the oil prevents the butter from burning. We'll add the sausage now. And as it cooks, we're gonna break it up with the spatula. This is a great recipe after you've been out all day. And, okay, the sausage is almost cooked completely. Now we're gonna start adding the red pepper and some diced onion. Our sausage is cooked, our onions cooked, and our peppers cooked. 
we're going to add some dry white wine and let it simmer for a couple of minutes until that wine evaporates a bit here in the pan. Okay, next we're going to add some heavy cream and we'll check it for seasoning in a minute. We're going to add a little bit of black pepper, some salt, it's a pinch of salt, and some parmesan cheese. We'll let this cook now on low for about 20 minutes. Hey, our pasta sauce has been simmering for 20 minutes here. Uh, I'm going to pour it on top of some nice cooked pasta here. And to that, I'm going to add some chopped fresh parsley. And we'll stir it up. Always incorporate the pasta with your sauce. Don't just put the pasta in a bowl, dump the sauce on top. It doesn't work that way. And here we go. All ready to go. You want to make it a little bit on the runny side. The uh, pasta will keep absorbing the cream. Here is our pasta for today. Sweet red pepper, sausage, and cream. It will make any dinner memorable. I'm Bill Gregorish from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregorish. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. For those of you that love fish, this is your day. We've got rainbow trout with lemon and capers. And the ingredients for today's recipe are two rainbow trout fillets, four tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of oil, flour, salt and pepper, one half cup dry white wine, one lemon, two tablespoon capers, and two tablespoons chopped parsley. For our rainbow trout recipe, we're going to start with some seasoned flour. I can put a little bit of salt and pepper in this flour mixture here. Stir it up, get that ready to go. Uh, I've got a pan heating up nicely here. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of whole butter. And while that's happening, we're going to take our fish, dredge it in the flour here. Try and keep the flour on the fish. And we'll add it. We're going to cook it with the skin side up because we always would like to present the fish. There we go. Okay, our fish is cooked on one side. We're going to turn it here. There we go. Continue cooking on the other side. Until it's done, you can tell by pressing on it. You can see it's very spongy, so it's not done yet. When it is done, it will the fish will give and it will uh, will start to separate into sections. Okay, our fish is cooked. We're going to take it over to our platter here. And then we're going to go back to the stove here. We're going to get rid of this old uh, oil in that. Keep our pan on the stove. We're going to add some, some more butter. To that, we're going to add some lemon zest. And some capers. I've got some jarred capers here that have been rinsed and, and washed. We'll add that. A little bit of black pepper and some white wine. We'll let that cook for a second until that wine reduces. It's reduced a couple of drops of lemon juice. And finally, some chopped fresh parsley. Okay, we go over to our fish, and we pour that over top, and there it is. And here it is, our gourmet style rainbow trout with capers and lemon. I'm Bill Gregors from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregors. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to make pizza like you've never had before. Smoked pepper, duck breast, and caramelized onions with fontina cheese. And the ingredients for today's recipe are 
one 13 inch pizza shell, two cups of grated Fontina cheese, one onion caramelized with butter, one smoked pepper duck breast, two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, chopped green onion, chopped parsley. We're making pizza with smoked pepper duck breast. Uh, I'm using a uh, pizza dough that we've made ourselves here. Uh, you can use a commercial type pizza dough that's sort of pre-baked already, one of those bobbly things or whatever you call them. Uh, something along that line or your own special recipe. Uh, to start with, I'm using Fontina cheese. Now, usually Fontina doesn't come grated, but you have to do that yourself. And I've got the pizza on my little paddle here. We're going to end up doing this, cooking this on a pizza stone in the oven that we have. And the pizza stones are wonderful for pizzas. They make them nice and crisp. Okay, we're going to spread the, put the Fontina, grated Fontina on the pizza. We're starting from the center and we work our way out towards the edge. Okay, Fontina is, is like from the mozzarella family. It's very, uh, the exception is it has a lot of flavor to it. Well, mozzarella cheese tends to be very, very bland. Okay, we've got the cheese on there. Now we're going to put some smoked pepper duck breast that we have here. Uh, as an alternative, you could use smoked chicken is nice, smoked, even smoked turkey, uh, or any other game that you have that you've got uh, smoked. We're going to cut it nice and thin here, and we'll lay that on. Here we go. Next topping is caramelized onions. Now what we've done with these onions, we've sliced them nice and thin, cooked them in some butter uh, until they softened up. And we'll put that on now. But just a sprinkle of salt, some black pepper, and some Parmesan cheese. Now the trick is to get it off of this board here and into the oven. So I usually do that slide it around away from the stove so I'm not getting all those pieces of cheese and things flying off. Okay, so it's ready to go into the oven. Uh, once you make it, bake it. Don't let it sit around on the board because what will happen, it'll condense and it'll end up sticking to that board and you'll never get it off. If you don't have one of these boards, you can use a cookie sheet, pie plate, old hubcap, whatever you got. Okay, and then into the hot oven, 450 degrees. And it takes approximately anywhere between 7 to 12 minutes to cook. Okay, here's our pizza brought out of the oven. We're going to garnish it with uh, some chopped green onion and some chopped parsley, fresh parsley. Always serve something fresh on top of your pizza. We eat with our eyes first. Here we go. And here's our recipe today, one that even the kids will like. It'll get you back in the duck blind. Smoked pepper duck breast with Fontina cheese and caramelized onion pizza. I am Bill Gregers from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregers. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to be preparing a garlic sauce that can be used for any domestic or wild meat that's very simple to make. And the recipe for today's ingredients are two six ounce boneless chicken breast skin off, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two ounces of clarified butter, four cloves of garlic sliced, three quarters of a cup sliced red onion, three ounces of dry white wine, one and a quarter cup of heavy cream, salt and pepper, and chopped fresh parsley. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is uh, we have our chicken breasts in front of us. We've got them butterflied, or the other way of doing it is to just pound them out with a, uh, with a meat hammer. Take the Dijon mustard, and spread it over the chicken. And I find just on one side is usually enough. You don't have to do both sides. Heat the uh, frying pan first, get it nice and hot, and then we're gonna add the clarified butter. Our butter's nice and hot. We'll take the chicken now and add it the Dijon mustard side down. We're gonna season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, we turn the chicken, cook the other side. Okay, when the chicken is done, just about, we're going to take it out of the pan, put it onto a nice warm plate, and then to that we'll add the chopped sliced garlic, nice and thin, 
and the red onion. We're going to cook, saute that onion and uh, garlic mixture now. The garlic is nice and golden and the onions are cooked nicely. I'm going to add the white wine now. And this is where we want to take a wooden spatula like this and scrape the bottom of the pan. And that's where all our flavor comes from in this sauce. The caramelization of the, uh, the meat protein from the chicken and the Dijon mustard. At this point we're going to add the heavy cream. And bring it to a simmer. And we'll add the chicken back to it. And we'll let this simmer for a few minutes now. Okay, we want to simmer this till it thickens. And you'll know when it's done, you'll see the cream starting to thicken nicely. Uh, taste the sauce for seasoning if it needs a bit more salt and pepper. And the last thing we're going to add is some chopped fresh parsley. And we'll shut it off here, go over to our platter. Get our chicken out. And it's good to make lots of extra sauce because you're gonna, it's great on top of mashed potatoes. And here's our recipe for garlic sauce that can be used for just about anything. I'm Bill Gregorish from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregorish. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're gonna be preparing a fabulous pepper steak recipe. And the ingredients for today's recipe are two seven ounce tenderloin steaks, one and a half inch to two inches thick, three tablespoons of whole black peppercorns, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of butter plus a reserved tablespoon of butter, one clove of garlic chopped, one cup of chopped red onion, two ounces of cognac, and chopped green onions for garnish. Okay, first thing we gotta do is we've got our steaks here, and we'll take a look at those. They're nice beef tenderloin. And for that, we're gonna have to take some black peppercorns here and we're gonna crush them. I've done a little bit already here, but just to give you an idea how to do it, just take a heavy frying pan and just put it on a work surface and just working the frying pan over it, we will crush them all up. Okay, that's ready to go. We'll take our steaks now and we're just going to place it on top of the peppercorn, cracked peppercorn mixture, and just using your hand, press the mixture into the, uh, into the steaks. We're going to, uh, to put our frying pan on now and heat it up. We're going to add some olive oil to it and our butter. The olive oil prevents the butter from burning. Okay, it's nice and hot. We'll put those in. Only turn the meat once though I find is the best because you don't want to uh, lose too much juice in the process of, uh, of cooking. Okay, we're ready to turn the meat now. We're going to have this nice and uh, rare, I believe, is the way I like it. And you can smell the peppercorns and the butter and the meat starting to caramelize. Okay, once the meat is cooked, we're going to remove it to a warm plate here. And now we're going to add the garlic. and the chopped red onion. Okay. And we're going to add the cognac. Okay, just let it reduce down a little bit. You don't want it dry, you still want to have some liquid in there and shut it off the, shut off the heat. And then take the last little bit of butter, the last tablespoon I told you to reserve, and drop it in there and swirl it around. Then we'll pour this mixture over the top of the steaks. Here's my recipe for pepper steak. I'm Bill Gregorish from Adventures in the Kitchen. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today's recipe will be pork medallions with a vinegar sauce. The ingredients for today's recipe are two pork tenderloins, some flour, salt and pepper, 
three tablespoons of olive oil, one onion, three cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of fresh thyme, one and a half cups of chicken broth, and a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Okay, I've got two nice pork tenderloin. I'm going to uh, butterfly them and make some little medallions here. And just cut a little, little slosh in the middle, then fold them over, press down on them. Cut them almost all the way through. We'll pound them out with our little hammer. Don't want them too, too thin, otherwise the meat will dry up and uh, it won't taste like much, but about this thick is what you need. Okay, next we're going to go over to the stove here with our pork tenderloin. We take a little bit of pepper and salt, season some flour here, just about a cup of flour, so just over a cup, you don't need much. And we'll take our pork tenderloin, dip it into the flour, shake off the excess, and into the frying pan. Now we're going to cook these pork tenderloin. We like to cook them almost all the way through. You don't want to cook them so they get dry. Okay, our pork tenderloin is about cooked. We're going to remove it from the pan onto a warm plate here. And then add the garlic and onion mixture. And we'll cook that now until it's the onions are nice and soft. I'm going to add some fresh thyme now. I just want the, uh, the leaves of the thyme. Okay, now to that onion and garlic mixture, I'm going to add a little bit of the flour just to, uh, that we use for flouring the pork and just enough to soak up the oil that's in the, that was left in the pan. And now I'm going to add some red wine vinegar. That flour that we added there will help thicken the sauce here. The smell is wonderful. And now the chicken stock. I add that. Now I'm going to add back the pork tenderloin, and it's like I say, it's about 90% cooked, but this will just finish it. Let the whole mixture simmer for about 10-15 minutes. Our pork has been cooking for about 15 minutes here. I'm going to add just a couple little grinds of uh, black pepper. The salt is okay in that. And we're going to put it, serve it up here. Here we go. This will make a nice little meal for the two of us. Here's our onion mixture and we pour that over top. And here's today's recipe, pork medallions with vinegar sauce. I'm Bill Gregorish from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregorish. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to be preparing a pasta with smoked salmon and cream sauce. The ingredients for today's recipe are four tablespoons of butter, two large shallots, three ounces of white wine, three cups of heavy cream, eight ounces of smoked salmon, one tablespoon of chopped chives, and one pound of pasta, and salt and pepper. Okay, for pasta with smoked salmon, we're going to take some shallots, and we're going to dice them up nice and fine. And you can use, substitute a little bit of red onion if you like, and a little bit of garlic. And we're going to take some whole butter. Okay, our butter is hot, we're going to add the shallots. And we're going to cook those till they're translucent. I'm going to add the white wine. Let that reduce a little bit by half. We'll add heavy cream. And we'll let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, our sauce has been simmering. I'm going to season it with just a pinch of salt and some black pepper. Now I might add that this recipe can be done with, with chicken, smoked chicken, smoked turkey, smoked rainbow trout.
We've got our salmon here, and it's pretty sliced. And I'm just going to cut it into little julienne strips and just drop it in. The uh, salmon is very delicate, and if we add it too soon, it's just going to fall apart. There's the salmon. Now, just to give it a little bit of color, we'll add a little bit of Italian parsley. Okay, here's our cooked pasta. We take our sauce and we're going to incorporate it right in with the pasta. There we go. Now all the flavors of the salmon will go through the cream and through the pasta. Okay, you want to mix this a little bit on the runnier side, on the wet side, because pasta will absorb the cream very quickly. And make sure that this pasta doesn't wait for the guests. The guests are waiting for the pasta. And last, a few chives for color. And here's our recipe for today. Very easy, very elegant. Smoked salmon pasta with cream sauce. I'm Bill Gregers from Adventures in the Kitchen. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to do an authentic Italian recipe for a roasted rabbit. Very simple, very easy. You're going to love it. The ingredients for today's recipe are 2 teaspoons of chopped garlic, 1 teaspoon of chopped fresh rosemary, 1 half cup of dry white wine, 1 half cup of olive oil, and 1 rabbit. Okay, we're going to cut our rabbit, take the liver out, and we're going to section it now. And do the hind first. And we're going to put it in a nice bowl here. We're going to make a marinade up in a few seconds here. We're going to make a marinade for our rabbit here. We're going to start with some garlic. And we'll chop that fine. Add that. I have some chopped fresh rosemary. We'll add that. Some dry white wine. and some olive oil. A little bit of salt and pepper. And we'll stir that up. Make sure all the rabbit is coated with the mixture. And we're going to let this marinate, preferably overnight. Uh, even a few hours is better than none. Okay, our rabbit has been marinating overnight. Uh, we have a nice heavy roast pan here. We're going to place the rabbit in it. Uh, the skin side up. The liver, we'll tuck it underneath here. And then pour the marinade over top of the rabbit. Now we're going to roast this for approximately 40 minutes at uh, 350 degrees, but halfway through the process we, we're going to want to baste it and keep basting it every, every few minutes. Okay, we're going to put it in the oven, 375 for 40 minutes. Be sure to baste the rabbit during the cooking process, it helps it get nice and juicy and tender, it keeps it moist, and keeps it from drying out. Here we are, authentic style roasted rabbit, just for you. I'm Bill Gregers from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregers. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we're going to be preparing honey fried trout. Today's list of ingredients are two whole rainbow trouts, two tablespoons of honey, four tablespoons of unsalted butter, one lemon, one half cup of cornmeal, one quarter cup of flour, one half teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon of black pepper, one egg, and one third of a cup of milk. Okay, here we go, honey fried trout. First of all, these fish that we got today are kind of big. I would have liked to have some pan-sized ones, but obviously I don't have a pan that big. So we're just gonna fill it these quickly. We've got some a cornmeal 
and flour and our salt and our pepper in there. We've mixed it all together. Let's take our milk and our egg and we're going to mix that up. We're going to rub this fish with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, and then we're going to put it in the cornmeal mixture. And then we need our egg mixture. We'll dump it in there. Back into the cornmeal. The trick with cooking fish is to cook it on the side you want to present it first. Okay, so we're going to cook it uh, the skin side up. Nice and golden brown. You want to check to see if your fish is done. You can take a little piece and you can just sort of crack it open there a little bit and take a look. So we'll take that, put it on a plate, and add our honey. To warm it up. And then over the top. Here it is, honey fried trout. I'm Bill Gregorish from Adventures in the Kitchen. Hi, I'm Bill Gregorish. Welcome to Adventures in the Kitchen. Today we have a great recipe called Walleye Adriatico. Very simple, very quick. It'll have you eating in no time. And the ingredients for today's recipe are three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs, two tablespoons of lemon zest, two tablespoons of olive oil, salt and pepper, one tablespoon of lemon juice, two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley, and a splash of white wine. Okay, we're gonna take our pickerel fillets here. How to get those bones out of the middle here. Just cut on either side. Grab the fish and just pull it down like a little zipper. Okay, the next step in this recipe is we're gonna start with about three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs and we're gonna need some lemon zest. All you want is the yellow part of the lemon, not the white. The white is the pith, it's, the very, it's very bitter. Our lemon zest here, we're gonna chop it up nice. Okay, we're gonna add that to the breadcrumb mixture. Some black pepper, some salt, some lemon juice, some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and some fresh parsley. We give that a little mix. And you want it nice and crumbly. You don't want it swimming in, in oil. Just lightly moistened, okay? You can see there's no real oil, but it does pack together, okay? And that's the secret to it. And lastly, we're gonna add just a little, little splash of white wine. We take our pickerel fillets and just sprinkle this mixture on top. Now this, this recipe makes enough for about eight pickerel fillets. We're just gonna use half of it here. Don't put it on too thick because it is gonna uh, ruin the ruin the, the, the texture of the fish. You're just going to have the big hunk of bread on top. You don't want that. You should be able to see the fish through the breadcrumb mixture. Okay. And lastly, just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top. Okay, this gives it a nice little shine when it cooks. Doesn't, you don't want it dry looking. Okay, just a very light drizzle. And we're going to take it and put it in a nice hot oven, 400 degrees. Fish is ready. Uh, it's been in the oven for about 10 minutes. So here we have nice baked pickerel fillets without the mess of frying. Here we go. And here's our recipe for today, walleye adriatico. It makes cooking fish just as enjoyable as catching them.